Comrade, <clears throat> it was uh, a governor colleague of yours. I'm talking of uh, uh, Shetima. It was a governor colleague of yours. And when you were party chairman, you also had a lot of work with, with uh, Shetima. Can you say, and I also I remember one time in uh, uh, a co-hotel when it was given, being given uh, an award with you uh, among other governors that uh, you actually came out to single him out as the most deserving of the award. Can you talk about him uh, as a person you worked with as a fellow governor and even as chairman of uh, the party? Thank you very much for that. Um, first, as uh, a former colleague, I do remember even that even the formation of APC, the final meeting of the progressive governors, uh, you know, from APC, once from CPC and uh, AMPP, we met in my degree and he hosted us. After the meeting, he insisted that we must convince Nigeria that there's life in my degree. Because at that time, people may have forgotten the dead president was afraid to travel to Maduguri, and not many Nigerians were able or willing to go to Maduguri because they thought that everybody there, I mean, the whole city had been taken over by Boko Haram. We went to the market. Yeah, uh, Shetima led us to the market. Popular market, I'm not talking of organized department stuff, where they sell all sorts of things, one of the largest markets in Maduguri. I mean, that is a show of courage. And he said, we need to help him let Nigerians know that there's still life in Maduguri. And they are determined to fight and defeat Boko Haram and concern it to the dustbin of history. Even though the only limitation he had is that he's not the commander-in-chief and there is, level, there is limit to what a governor can do. I'd like to rightly recall, when one of the newspapers, I don't remember exactly now, listed about 10 governors for award, and I had the privilege of making, making a comment. In the presence of these other governors, I said, in my opinion, the one that is the most deserving of this award is Governor Shetima. On account of what I have seen, I mean, as a governor, I have no business flattering another governor. You know, he, 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 there's nothing I needed from him. But truth be told, even governor not facing security challenges, they find one reason or the other to explain their failure. And here is a governor who, in spite of those challenges, is able to demonstrate, commission um, major infrastructural programs, devote resources to building schools, devote resources to building houses to resettle those areas that have been recovered from Boko Haram, and insisting that Bruno will be back on his feet in spite of the activities of these people. I've also watched his comments on, uh, on this matter some five years ago, and I think it was you, uh, Omojola, who, who said that program. And if you watch that interview, you know that we are talking of a man who passionately, who passionately believes about Nigeria. But let's not just limit the discussion to the question of, uh, of, uh, the, of uh, Shetima. The issue is, what are the fears of those who are making this comment? Oh, I have read also people saying that this is part of the plan to Islamize Nigeria. The candidate himself, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I see Islamize his house, his home, his family members. <laughs> his wife is a Christian. Not just a Christian, he's a pastor or a deacon, a deaconess. While other governors struggle to go to back to National Assembly after their tenure as governors, I say, why do you? ask his wife to go to the Senate. So even for those who talk about gender balancing, as you uh, has led the way. So I think it is, for me, I've told people, even yesterday I had a extensive conversation with people, I said, this is the first indicator that if elected, as you can be trusted to take those tough decisions. Nigeria will move away from the cycle, the vicious cycle we are in, if we want to get the politics right and get the economics wrong. It is okay for those who live on religion to make it as an issue. And when I look back, I ask myself, when we had, we had Christian, Christian the days of our war and the days of uh, Shagari, I mean, people agreed that Nigeria was doing better, that there were more issues. Some talk about green revolution, others talk about free education, et cetera, et cetera. But beginning with time when we bring in these religious issues, 
Everything has to be balanced. Ethnicity, religion, and some other primordial sentiment. I'm not sure how helpful these are. All right. As, uh, comrade Oshemole, let me are also you hearing me? ask. Yes, where are you? Yes, yes. We, we had all, you all your points, and it was also instructive for me, uh, talking about the 2017 video you mentioned. Uh, we we uh, you know, showed it here in during the show yesterday, and that video also trended during the most part of, of Wednesday. But when you weigh this on one hand, when you look at how a five-year-old video would even still be a thing of discussion, now a thing of debate, as to Mr. Uh, Shetima's alleged links with Boko Haram and, and whether he will be able to bring in, you know, the, the, the achievements he made in curtailing Boko Haram in um, giving uh, the Christians in alleged. his state a sense of belonging. How do you weigh this um, back and forth, the accusations as against the man, Kashim Shetima, that you know? Um, give Comrade Oshomole, are you there? It's All right. Seems so it, it, it appears argument. we may have to um, reconnect with um, the comrade. These uh, religious debate rather than debating policy issues. And the more we dodge them, the more this dysfunctional conversation will continue. In my view, at this time, I told a journalist yesterday, I said, I'm shocked that if you watch television, so many hours and airtime have been devoted to discuss it, Christian, Christian, Muslim, Muslim. Not sufficient time has been, has been devoted to discussing the fact that, as we speak, university students of the poor are at home, and they are likely to lose a whole one-year calendar, not for the first time. This has been the issue, other recurrent issues, even under the military government, so that the ruling class have managed to downplay these issues because they have found private solutions for their own children. These are the things that should engage Nigerians. And I'm troubled that even at this time when both Christian and Muslim poor are united in poverty, those who are seeking political office indulge themselves in balancing religion and balancing ethnicity and balancing all the dysfunctional primordial sentiment. Nigeria did better when these were never issues. When has a religion uh, 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 become uh, to the center stage in our political discourse. For me, there has to be a courageous person, and as well you are shown that he is one, that will take religion to where it belongs. Let the Khan manage the business of the church and the JNI, Jama National Islam, let them manage the business of the Muslims and allow government to govern for the whole of Nigerians including to the benefit of non-believers. So, but to put the region as a key issue, is, really, is that really the explanation for our problem? If we all become, we build church, there are the one, wait, one enemy has said something, that those who are going to be born to build religious houses, if they spend half of their resources to build more schools, Nigeria may, be, may do even better than we are doing currently. At a time when the world is talking about technology, we are talking about a knowledge-driven world, some people want to do as if we, the challenge about a religious driven world. Now, there is no evidence that, I mean, if you look at the statistics, I guess that Nigeria may well boast or post the most attractive statistics in terms of per capita, uh, if you look at the number of churches per capita or number of mosques per capita. What has this translated to? Given the level of criminality or fraud or corruption in our system, do they reflect a society that is so religious? So I see a lot of hypocrisy. In my view, only God knows who is a believer. The fact that the man goes to church tells you little or nothing about his beliefs. The fact that the man sleeps in the mosque is not enough evidence that he's a Muslim. Because we have seen people who go to the mosque to steal people's shoes, just like I've seen people who went to the church to steal people's handset. Those are not Christians. <laughs> Those are not Muslims. So we do need to interrogate whether people are not now using religion as a cover you know, to cover up some of, their, uh, some of the things they do that are inelegant. You know, for me, <sighs> let, me let me ask a question. Our presidential candidate is a happily married man. 
he had demonstrated religious, not just religious tolerance, respect for people's choice of their faith by the fact that his wife is a Christian. This must be played up. How many of our leaders, even Christians, who are Catholic, who will allow themselves to marry uh, a lady who is, uh, for example, deeper life, or vice versa? That's the level of intolerance of some people. So how can a man who has not Islamized his family, who has allowed freedom of worship within his own household, how can anybody who has some fear for, you know, for, who, who, has, who has respect for truth and fear of God, suggest that with such a person as president of Nigeria, that he will Islamize Nigeria. When we right. take off to go to Dubai and go to other places, including many Nigerians I know who have been to um, Rwanda recently, ah, they come back to say Rwanda things are working, the new president is wonderful, uh, you, can't ever, you can't talk about ethnicity anymore, and when they finish, they ask you, where are you from? By the way, we have to put this in out. If I have my way, we will delete all of these things in our government documents, your state of origin, your religion, and if you like, even your gender, so that people can get what they deserve, not on the basis of their faith. I have said to some people, if you do not believe in God and you head up in hell, it is your body. If I believe in God and I'm guided by the, the, the Bible or the Quran, and I love my neighbor as myself, and I end up in heaven, it is my privilege. But when it comes to public policy, for God's sake, let us have a robust debate on how to put an end to, a country, uh, to, to our educational system, how to ensure that you know, the money voted, the law on universal basic education, which says that basic education is compulsory, that we find the political will to implement it.